Hello everyone and welcome back to Amateur Astronomy Storm Chasing. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this kind of clear night tonight. I'm just going to do something short and sweet really. Uh, tonight I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do my time lapses of the stars and my star trails and everything like that. Because there's been a few of you guys ask exactly how I, how I make those. And uh, yeah, it's pretty simple really. All you need is this camera. Uh, basic of 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens i won't be using my more wide angle lens tonight just for the sake of playing with it really and a uh remote timer and uh once we get the time lapse started and everything uh after that we'll go in and use a free program called star stacks it's free on both a mac and pc and it's really easy to use and you can get some really good results out of that so uh, anyways let's go ahead and get started all right one of the first things that you're going to want to do is make sure that your camera is in manual mode. Manual mode allows you to have complete control over your exposure and everything else. So that. And also, on your lens, there should be a little switch on it somewhere. Make sure that that is not on automatic focus or AF and make sure it is on manual focus, MF. That way you can manually focus in on the stars. And I'll show you how to do that here just in a little bit. Once you're in manual mode, be sure to set your ISO anywhere from 8 800, 1600, somewhere around in there. Um, the higher, the more stars are going to pop out, really, but also the more uh, light pollution is going to affect your images and everything else. So I found that really here close to the city, 800 seems to be pretty good. And then after that, you'll want to adjust your shutter speed. In manual mode, you want to go down pretty low. Now I found really the sweet spot to be anywhere from like uh, 8 to uh, probably 13 seconds for simplicity we'll go with 10 seconds tonight and with normal astrophotography you're usually shooting in raw mode which i don't know if you can really see it right here but i'm currently in raw mode there's no need to do that whenever you're shooting the time lapse like this so let's go in your settings and turn it on just normal jpeg mode and that'd be just fine right there Another thing to know as well, if you're shooting like on a cold night or something, or a night where the temperature's really going to drop, it may be a good idea to use a dew heater just to keep the dew off your lens, because you're going to be out for a pretty good while shooting a time lapse of the stars, and your lens will most definitely fog up pretty quickly. And last but not least, make sure you have a fresh battery in your camera, because shooting a time lapse like this will kill the battery pretty quickly, so make sure it's topped off. Okay, and finally your remote timer. This newer timer right here is the same one that I use for everything on the channel. I got it off of Amazon, I believe, for like $18. It's a killer little timer. It's never let me down. And it's got really good battery life as well, and it's super simple to use. But on it, uh, I'm sure all timers pretty well work the same. Uh, go ahead and set how long the exposure is to uh, 10 seconds just to kind of mirror what you got on the camera. On the delay, there's really no point in having that. And for the interval, I like to set it uh, three to five seconds something like that just kind of give the memory card enough time to sort of catch up with how many pictures you're taking so we'll go with three seconds and for the number over here I just like to set it really at uh, infinity let's see yeah right there I just like to set it at infinity and I like to let my time lapse just go for a couple hours usually so let's go ahead and set that and really that's it for the timer it's pretty it's a pretty simple little process so now we'll go ahead and get set up and set our focus. Alright, once you've got your camera set up on a sturdy platform, I'm just using my basic little tripod here. Go ahead and set it up in a location where you can get a big portion of the sky in frame. I always like to shoot to my southeast because that's the clearest area of the sky for me. So that's where I'm pointing right now. And the way to set your focus is go ahead and point and see if you can find a bright star in the sky. Fortunately right now, Sirius is nearly up at zenith. And that's a pretty good and set your focus on. If you can't find a star, a distant uh, street light or a distant tower, or something like that, anything will work really. Just set your focus at what's called infinity. As you can see here, I'm twisting the focus range to change the focus of Sirius. And just go ahead, 
what I do here really is just go ahead and get it as tiny as you possibly can. And once I'm happy with it being just a little pinprick, I'll just go ahead and set it at that and leave it there. And now you're ready to go ahead and get started. Once you're happy with your framing and your focus, go ahead and take a couple of test shots. Using the uh, remote shutter, you can just press the button on it, that way you don't bother the camera. And go ahead and take your first shot. Then go ahead and review it. As you can see here, I'm kind of a little too low, so I probably want to scoot my camera up just a little bit to get a little bit more of the sky and get it out of the driveway here. But you can definitely see Orion right here in Sirius. So we'll go ahead and kind of change our framing and go ahead and take another shot. Okay, I went ahead and adjusted the camera. Now let's see what we can get. All right, that one right there, I like a little bit better. Let's see. This light down here is kind of bothering me. So I'm going to adjust my framing just a little bit more, just enough to get that light just out of frame. Okay, so I totally just uh, changed positions here and I'm facing now towards the north. I've actually got my tripod set up on the table here on the back porch, looking over the house. So this will work just as well. And as you can see here, there's quite a few star stars there in the frame. Um, I'm actually going to turn up the ISO just to make them pop a little bit more. So I'll turn my ISO up to 1600. Well, most of this here is totally up to you. You know, it's up to you to decide what you want in your foreground and everything else. I'm picky with what I want in mine. There's some lights here out to the side that just wasn't working with me tonight. So I ended up pointing it this way. So I'm really liking what I'm saying now. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started. And really, the only thing to do now is just go ahead and start your time lapse. Uh, one thing that you will want to do too, just kind of come out every now and then and check on it, you know, make sure nothing's falling over. As you've seen in some of my other videos, I've got a couple crazy cats running around here, and by all likelihood, one of them will jump up there and, you know, knock the shutter release cable off or something, just enough to kind of throw the framing off. So just kind of be sure uh, to poke out the window or something, just make sure everything still looks okay. But besides that, uh, as for the shooting part, that's all there is to it. So, now let's just hang out. Okay, let's come out here to check on everything and it's still going so far, so good. And uh, one thing I did forget to mention earlier is uh, be sure to do this on a night where there is not a moon in the sky because if there's any moonlight over in the area where you're trying to shoot, you're in for a bad time. And um, yeah, the camera's still going over here behind me. I don't know if you can hear it ticking or not. But there are some clouds over here in the west right now that's definitely moving in this way. So I'll probably want to let it go here for about another 15 minutes or so. And uh, tomorrow I'll just kind of play with the shots that I got. Um, one thing I would like to say about this method here that I'm going to show you guys and the way that I do it, I feel like it's just honestly just a simple way to do it. I feel like a lot of the tutorials out there just kind of overcomplicate uh, star trails and everything, but really they're just it's pretty simple to shoot. I don't know, I mean, I'm not saying that this is the best tutorial or, or anything like that, but I just feel like it's simple. And I like to keep things kind of simple on this channel because this stuff is it's kind of tricky to learn some of it. So, yeah, I want to let it go, like I said, another 15, maybe 20 minutes if we're lucky. And uh, I'll pick up this tomorrow. See you guys then. Alright guys, here we are now the next day. And uh, me and Lily here has got all of our images carried over. And one thing I can really highly recommend too if you start getting into astrophotography is get you an external hard drive. Because once you get so many pictures and everything together, it just takes up so, so much space. Like here, as you can see, all these pictures from last night, uh, I mean, yeah, they're all in JPEG form, but still a gig and a half. And just think, uh, especially whenever you start getting into deep sky astrophotography and stuff, how your raw images would take up even that much more space. But yeah, uh, it's a good investment. Yeah, moving on from that, uh, so the program we're going to be using here is called StarStacks. 
it's a free program for both Mac and PC. And as all you guys don't know, I use a Mac for pretty much everything. But yeah, StarSex is a really, really easy to use program here. Once it opens up, uh, you know, it's really cleanly laid out. It's really intuitive as well. You can see over here where you drop all your pictures at, which we will go ahead and start moving all those in. Let's see. Let's see. And we ended up getting 366 pictures, which will be more than enough to get some star trails going. And obviously, if you want longer star trails, you know, you just need to have a longer session overall. But you can see here now we've got all of our images loaded in, and uh, it shows you a preview basically of each image over here. So, the idea of this program here is that it goes in and it stacks all of these images together in order to create your star trails. And you can see over here that you have different blending modes. Uh, gap filling is the one to use when making star trails. Uh, there's other modes here that I'm not 100% sure exactly what they're used for, but as you see, if you hover over it, it kind of tells you what each of these does. And also down here below you have what's called a comet mode, which the comet mode basically makes, um, instead of normal looking star trails, it makes it look like each of the star trails is like comet tails, where they taper off towards the end, which can lead to some really cool images as well. Uh, what we're going to do here, uh, gap filling, uh, over here is just a few more options that you can play around with. So it's really easy to use software. But yeah, once you get all your images loaded in here over over here to the left and get your settings over here set, get gap filling, gonna leave comment mode off. Um, once you have all that in order, you just go up here and hit start processing. And you'll see what happens here is it's actually adding all these photos together, basically stacking them on one another. And you can see the star trails here start to form. And now it's kind of a slow process and it will take a little while. But once we get here towards the end of it, I'll pick back up from there. Alright, and now you can see that we've got our final image down here, and it's got some pretty good star trails to it. Up here, you know, you can see you kind of zoom in on it and everything. And right there, it looks like we've got a couple airplane trails, maybe a couple satellite trails going through here. And you can kind of see, like, there's a little gap right here. And actually, what that was is I went and I actually put on my dew heater at one point because it I got to look at the temperature and it started dropping pretty quickly. So I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and do that. But yeah, as you can see, uh, it doesn't really look like there may be a little cloud right there or something like that or maybe just something on my sensor on the lens. But uh, if you think about it, if there were any clouds in the sky whatsoever, as if even if it was just in like a couple of these photos, that that would show up and everything else would stack there. So it's best, you know, to do this on a cloud that's not, if possible. And there's something else that's really cool with this program too. As you can see down here um, in the preferences, uh, same area as this uh, blending mode that we picked earlier, you can click save after each step. And what that does is that actually saves this uh, this series of images that we process over here as a separate set of images from your uh, original ones. And what it does is it creates a new set of those images with those star trails in them. And basically what you can do with that is go in and start creating time lapses and stuff of these star trails forming. So we'll go ahead and do that now and I'll show you exactly how I always get like my star trail time lapses and all that good stuff going. Okay now we've got it going here and as you can see I made a new folder here of uh, star trail time lapse and uh, basically what it's doing is every time it processes uh, one of those photos you know lays, lays one on top of the previous one it goes in and creates that overlay here and it's actually building each file as it goes. So it'll take a couple minutes here but once it gets finished we'll have just the same number of images as our original set but this set of images will have all the star trails in them so you can go in and like animate them and all that kind of stuff which I think that's a really really cool thing with this program here so you know it's a free program it's super easy to use and again like I said earlier it's just really intuitive and uh, you can do a lot with it and that I, I really enjoy that aspect of it I really like animating my star trails and everything the pictures alone by themselves you know are really cool as well but I like going in, as you guys have seen, in all, in a lot of my videos really, I like to have the star trails actually going across the sky. It's one of my favorite things to film. It's one of my favorite styles of time lapses and 
but yeah, really, it's a pretty simple process, I feel like, especially, you know, with free software, I feel like I get pretty good results, you know, of course, you know, you have uh, Lightroom and everything else, which that's something I'm still kind of learning on, but, uh, yeah, that's it, that's how I do all of my star trails and all of my uh, star lapses and everything living across the sky. It's pretty simple, but uh, it does the trick for me, and maybe you guys learn a thing or two with me. Um, give it a shot if you want to but uh yeah that's about it uh if you guys haven't yet please be sure to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell that way you'll know whenever i do upload and know my uploads are very sporadic but yeah that's about it so as always guys thank you all so much for watching and i hope you enjoy mm -hmm.